Hi, North. Welcome back to music. Pop quiz. How many instrument families are there? If you said four, bravo. Okay. Can you name all four instrument families? They are string, woodwind, brass, percussion. If you've got all four of those, good job. All right, here's the tougher question. How do we know which instruments go in which families? It all has to do with the vibration, right? So how an instrument vibrates usually tells us which family it's in, okay? Or what's doing the vibrating. So in the strings family, what does an instrument need to have to, have to be in the string family? Strings, right? And those strings are the things that do the vibrating to create the sound, okay? Um, what about the woodwind family? Ooh, a lot of kids have a hard time remembering this one. What does a wood, how is the vibration created in the woodwind family? It has something called a reed. And I don't mean read the book. It's spelled R-E-E-D, reed. And the reed creates the vibration, okay? Then in the brass family, this is kind of a fun one. Uh, what creates the vibration in the brass family? It's your lips, your lips create the vibration. So you use something called an embouchure. Um, so your embouchure, you kind of have to make your lips kind of skinny and tight and then you blow through them. <laughs> kind of sound like an elephant, right? <laughs> if you're practicing that right now, make sure you're not like spitting on your brother or sister, okay? Um, and then the percussion family. How do we know an instrument's in the percussion family? Something has to be hit or struck to make it vibrate, right? Um, hopefully if you're one of my older kids that this is all just review and you remember all this stuff, but maybe for some of my second graders, this might be new. Well, I'm gonna read you a book about somebody that absolutely loves all the instruments in all of the families. And um, it's called The Remarkable Farkle McBride. That's his name, Farkle McBride. And it's written by John Lithgow and illustrated by C.F. Payne. What does illustrated mean? It means that that is the person that uh, drew all of the pictures in our book. So here we go. The remarkable Farkle McBride. Oh, pity the prodigy Farkle McBride. No matter what instrument poor Farkle tried, whether strumming or blowing or drumming or bowing, his musical passions were unsatisfied. When Farkle McBride was a three-year-old tyke, all freckly, bony, and thin, he astonished his friends and his family alike by playing superb violin. He went readily, deedily, deedle dee dee with all of the strings at his side. Readily, deedily, deedle dee dee the remarkable Farkle McBride. But when he was four, Farkle played it no more in spite of his parents' beseeching. He shattered the records he used to adore. He smashed up his rosin, ripped up every score. He threw fiddle and bowed to the living room floor as he shouted, Enough of your screeching! When Farkle was five, his melodical gift once again bore rhapsodical fruit. The woodwinds inspired his spirits to lift, and he rapidly mastered the flute. He ran rootily, tootily, tootily, too, with all of the winds at his side. Rootily, tootily, tootily, too, the remarkable Farkle McBride. But at six, Farkle flung his flute into the lake. Notwithstanding its lyrical trill, he stamped on the dock till you'd think it would break. That's it, he exclaimed. I've had all I can take. That tootling gives me a brutal headache. It's so wimpy and whiny and shrill. When Farkle was seven, a different sound rekindled his musical flame. He became the most expert trombonist around, and the boulevards buzzed with his name. He 
He went vroom pity doom pity doom pity doom with all of the brass at his side. Vroom pity doom pity doom pity doom. The remarkable Farkle McBride. But at eight, he declared to his parents' despair, and as everyone else might have guessed, I can't stand the trombone with its blat and its blare. That racket is more than my eardrums can bear. So return it or throw it away, I don't care. I despise it just like all the rest. When Farkle was nine, both his father and mum were bursting with pride and affection. For Farkle learned xylophone, cymbals, and drum, the entire percussionist section. He went boom, bash, clang a clash, all of the clamor that he could provide. Tinkly, bing, bong, bumpity, crash, the remarkable Farkle McBride. But soon he felt prey to his usual gloom, despite all the praise and the flattery. First sigh, then a sulk, then a frown, then a fume. Then an ear-splitting tantrum that emptied the room. I can't take it, he bellowed. The crash and the boom and the clang and the bang of the battery. <laughs> Poor Farkle at ten. <sighs> Howsoever renowned reached the end of his musical tether. But then he discovered his favorite sound, musicians all playing together. It happened like this. The conductor caught cold on the day of a major recital. You've got to replace him, young Farkle was told. Your cooperation is vital. So he took the baton and he gave the downbeat and kaboom, the foundations were shaken by glorious music, bombastic and sweet, that filled up the hall and spilled into the street. Music that brought the whole crowd to its feet from the instruments he had forsaken. They went readily, tootily, vroom, pity, bang, bravo, all the spectators cried. Deedily, doodily, doom, pity, clang, the remarkable Farkle McBride. Since that sparkling night, Maestro Farkle McBride conducts all the instruments he ever tried. His happy heart sings to brass, drums, winds, and strings, and remarkable Farkles at last. Satisfied. The end. So what are we looking at here? This is an orchestra. So when you put all of those instrument families together, you get one great big orchestra and Farkle is the conductor. So if you've ever seen anybody standing in front of one of the music groups, they are either called a conductor or a director. All right, I hope you enjoyed the remarkable Farkle McBride. I would say that he is pretty remarkable and I think you're pretty remarkable. So I hope you have a great day and I will see you next time. Bye.